original golf course in Dubai, the glorious Emirates Golf Club. And it's the second Rolex Series event of 2023, the Hero Dubai Desert Classic, where all the players are hoping to get their hands on this beauty of a trophy. We've got a fantastic show coming your way. Jamie Spence and Incy Mehmet are alongside me in the studio. Two-time winner Ewan Ferguson and the Good Good Golf Boys are popping in for a chat as well. And lots more great content coming your way. Welcome to the Zoom Virtual Clubhouse. Dubai Desert Classic. Where memories are made. Really the story in Dubai and the history books are rewritten. The greatest player on the planet. The greats of the game have won here. He has. And Woods is home in 31. An opportunity to join legends of the past. And we've seen Seve in that mood before. Now who will make their mark? Thanks for joining us in the heart of Dubai. An incredible backdrop behind us and what's in front of it is pretty good as well as I'm joined by Jamie Spence and Incy Mehmet in the studio. Got a great show coming your way as well. As I said, Ewan Ferguson will be popping in. A couple of guys from the Good Good Golf Content YouTube channel as well. We'll also be taking a look at the 18th hole and going for a walk down on the range. And importantly, we want you guys at home to get involved. If you've got questions for anyone here in the studio, send them in using the Q&A function. And Incy will be manning that and also looking after the great competition we've got. Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to today. I think we've got some brilliant guests as well. As always, we do have a poll up and running and the winner will be contacted at the end of the show. But first things first, give yourself a chance to win a signed pin flag by Hatton and Shane Lowry, of course, the past Open champion. And details on how to enter will be right in front of you. But the question is, how many DP World Tour titles has Hovland won before winning the championship here last year. So you've got your options right in front of you. Uh, it's either three, one, zero, or two. So please do get involved. It should be fun. And like I said, the winners will be contacted right at the end. Thank you very much. And see another great prize. All of that is to come. But first up, we're about to be joined by a two-time DP World Tour winner. I'm delighted to say Ewan Ferguson is alongside us. Ewan, thanks very much for popping in. How are you feeling this week heading into the Hero Dubai Desert Classic? Yeah, I'm feeling good. Obviously, I've recently um, moved just to the marina, so it feels like a bit of a home event, and it's just a five-minute uh, car ride to the, the entrance. So it's um, been a pretty nice week so far, pretty chilled, and um, looking forward to get going tomorrow. Always nice to have a home game. You've not played this course in tournament conditions before, but I'm presuming you've played it a few times anyway. Yeah, I've never played the tournament here. I was actually first reserve last year and was on site um, practicing. So I've kind of played it in tournament conditions a little bit in practice. Um, and I've played here, I actually played here on Christmas Day as well. So um, just to try and get some, some quick uh, <laughs> uh, practice in before the tournament. So yeah, it's... Um, it's in really good condition. I think it's going to be a tough week. They've got the rough up and I think we've got some rain forecasted as well. So it'll be make things for a bit of a challenge. Talk us through the strengths of your game. When I look at the stats, it's sort of greens in regulation, ball striking, iron play. Yeah. Is that fair? Is that where you think? Yeah, definitely. I think um, I'm pretty straight off the tee, uh, decent enough distance. And then um, my iron play can be, can be 
pretty strong and all you need to do is try and rely on a hot putter one week. So I am uh, just came up here from the putting green. I was trying to uh, work on that. Hopefully get a hot putter this week. be a good one. And what's it like you're playing with Adrian Moronk and Seth Stracker tomorrow? Obviously all Ryder Cup hopefuls. Are you feeling that? Are you feeling you're in the mix of all that? Um, to be honest, not really. I'm just um, trying to play golf and enjoy it and try and play well. I think there's so many good golfers. I've kind of sprung myself into this kind of limelight of Ryder Cup and stuff like that. But mentally, I feel like I'm just trying to be my own person and play my own golf. And if that kind of stuff happens, I'd be incredible. But I mean, yeah, there's so many amazing players. Like I still get starstruck when I walk by Rory in the range. So. Um, well, we'll just see what happens there. I must admit, I didn't know that you moved from Scotland to sunny mm. Scotland to yeah, yeah. Uh, Dubai. Uh, that must have been quite a recent thing. We need Dubai, you mean? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So um, we caught up last year in Glasgow, your hometown. Mm. I mean, what's the key differences and has there been any challenges just moving? Um, yeah, there's been some challenges just because you miss your family and your kind of loved ones at home. But um, I just felt like it was a good step for me to try and get better at golf practice all round, um, the, all round the full year. Uh, I've got loads of people to play with. Um, obviously, I've been practicing with Fleetwood a bit at Tommy's Academy at Jumeirah, stuff like that. Um, Guido lives in the building across from me, Jim Moronk, uh, Cool Sarts and stuff. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of guys around Adria now. So I've been playing with these guys and uh, little competitions against them. So I think it's only going to stand me in good stead going forward, really. And obviously, you're playing big, hard, tough golf courses that you get on the tour as well. So yeah. We've got a couple of questions from the guys here, but before we go on to that, I wanted to ask you, obviously, we're just walking off the back of uh, an, an off-season, mm -hmm. and I know you're a massive fan of country music, yeah. and you went out to the States, you bought yourself a pair of boots, maybe yeah. some ca cowboy hats, who yeah. knows? Just tell us a little bit more about that. How did you get into country music? Why do you love it so much? And is that your walkout song? Yeah, a country song would definitely be my walkout song. Um, I went after the DP World Finals, I went to Nashville, Tennessee, um, heard so much good stuff about it, so I went there for a long weekend, uh, had the hat and all the kit. I got into it because I was in um, high school in the States for a few years, uh, from like 15 to 18, um, and I just yeah, I think I don't know if there's many Scotsmen that like country music. <laughs> favorite track? What's your favorite track? My favorite singer is Morgan Wallen, um, and he's got uh, a few that are very much played regularly. You're give us a rendition, are you? I, I could do, but I don't <laughs> think do. it's a good idea. Okay. But later, <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe on uh, Sunday night, hopefully. <laughs> I just want to rewind to well, just over a year ago, really. Graduated yeah. off of the Challenge Tour, end of 2021. Now you sit here a two-time DP World Tour winner. The journey you went on last season must have been incredible. What did you do to take your game to that next level? Um, I think I just kind of grew in confidence with some decent results. I think it helped. I had uh, other Scottish golfers my similar age um, that I've played with growing up that were doing so well as well. Uh, I played with them, played with them since forever, and I think that kind of just gave me confidence without even playing, just knowing that I felt like I could compete with them, and they were doing so well. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, same coach, same everything. Just tried to keep doing what I was doing. Probably some more reps, and just uh, yeah, just need a little break here and there and you know, chip in on 16 and Qatar might have just been the break that I needed so yeah it was good. So that progress was rewarded with a spot in the Hero Cup to start off 2023. Mm. A little bit of a warm up for the Ryder Cup some might say what was that experience like for you? I found it very different yeah um, when you when you play bad yourself um, you kind of just think to yourself right I'm going to get to the range and just and just practice and get and get better but when you when you play bad uh, for a team Especially with Tommy as your captain, he's such a nice, such a good guy. And when you let him down, you feel pretty, pretty sad. So uh, it's it's a bit of a different experience, and um, but one that definitely made me hungry to mm -hmm. inspire. It was very inspiring hanging around Shane and playing against Molinari and Peters, Norrin guys who've reached the, yep. the pinnacle of the game, and it made me want to be in that situation more often so that I can test myself against the best. And well, see if we've got some questions yeah, coming in. Absolutely. I mean, one of the wonderful things about this, uh, we get to your fans to interact with all uh, the questions. So we've got a question from Rand Veer. Uh, you're having a bad day on the golf course. I know it doesn't happen often, but how do you control your emotions and keep a score together? Um, 
it's something that I've worked on quite a lot in the last year, but uh, I was uh, actually gave my, my carry the, the green light to really give me a tail off, tailing off if I get my head down. Um, That's very brave. Yeah, <laughs> it is, it's very brave, but I felt like if he can't do it, then yeah, fair I'm enough. just going to keep get, get my, digging, digging myself out. Yeah, I have listened, so um, just really tell me, like, come on, stick to your process, you're still on the golf course, don't forget how lucky you are just to be, to be out there, because it's, it's our... Really fun, fun job, and um, especially when things are going well, and you, you're still going to have your bad days. So I've been uh, let let him kind of get a hold of me at times, and just stick to my processes, and not try and get too eager to get close to pins after I've made a bogey, and you know fairways and greens, and just see what happens. Really. Sensible play. And you got another yeah. question from Paolo over here. Um, what was it like being part of the hero team? But also, what was Tommy Fleetwood like? As your captain, was there anything special that stood out for him that showed great leadership? Yeah, definitely. Um, I couldn't believe how like passionate he, he was uh, in the team room with us all. He he was very he was great with me. Uh, he always had his arm around me. He was always telling me, "Come on, let's do it," um, which actually made me feel really good. And even last week, I got some confidence just from. Uh, the, these, those experiences, you know, we walked by him in the putting green and he's, he's calling me by your nickname, Yubo, and he's like, all right, Yubo, how are you doing? And all of a sudden you feel even more part of the, the tour. And um, yeah, I, I really enjoyed, even like Shane took kind of control at times as well with uh, some of his chat, obviously an open champion. And mm. But yeah, I think Tommy was his, his passion and his, honestly, I, you just can't believe how hard like Tommy, guy like Tommy works. You just think it all comes so natural, and you, it's just so easy for him when you watch him on TV. But um, no, every time he's he's always in the range, he's always in the gym, he's always up early, he does everything so so well. So it was uh, he definitely led by example. Yeah, it must be amazing playing an individual sport, being actually part of a team almost. I'm sure that was a special environment to be part of. Yeah, definitely um, different, but you know, I want I want a bit more of that in the mm, future. I like the sound of that. Yeah, you and thank you so much for popping in and sharing those insights with us. Good luck this week. It is a bit of a home game for you. From a man hoping to add to his two DP World Tour wins this week to someone who's won twice around here, the great Tiger Woods. The pars are no good to Woods now. does not know the meaning of the word defeat. What a performance. He's got the chief. Fantastic. Just fantastic. He has. He has. Unbelievably, he has. And Woods is home in 31. So many great memories seeing Tiger Woods in action here. A little earlier in the week, Jamie and I went down to the range to chat to some of the players teeing it up this week. Welcome to the range with Jamie and I, our first victim. Well, we're going to dive straight in because I've seen a man I really want to talk to. Sepp Stracker, Austrian, played the Hero Cup a couple of weeks ago. Made his name on the PGA Tour, of course. Again, see you a lot more now on the DP World Tour. Sepp, great to see you here. How are you enjoying your little adventure on the DP World Tour the last few weeks? It's been fun. It's been really fun. It's my first time in this part of the world and yeah, having a great time. And obviously you played in the Hero Cup. Great experience. How much has that whetted the appetite for getting in that Ryder Cup team? Uh, a lot, yeah. They did a great job setting it up. The, the team room was uh, was a blast and you know, playing that format is always fun. How's that dynamic when you're in America, you know, you went to college in America, went to Georgia, we've just been talking about that, and you see Europe versus USA, you you, you must have different loyalties there at some point be living in America um, I mean, I've got you're Europe through and through right <laughs> I've got a lot of friends that, that uh, will play on that team but yeah. one of my favorite things to do is beat my friends at golf so, <laughs> so yeah no there won't be any uh, split loyalties there and what are your plans for the rest of the season are you, you going to come back over here and, and play on the DP World Tour a few times yeah definitely plan on playing a few over here um, it's always kind of the goal to kind of secure some status over there and then uh, try to play the tournaments that I like to play and off the, off the golf course, what do you like doing off the golf course? What's, what's fun for you? Uh, I like to watch sports, college football and baseball are the, the two main ones. Your team's doing quite well, aren't they? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, they're doing great. Uh, the Georgia, <laughs> Bulldogs. Georgia Bulldogs, champions. That's right. I just want to ask one more question before we go. Obviously, when you came over here, you probably didn't know too many of the guys that well. 
over the last few weeks and being in that team room at the Hero Cup, who are the guys you've got especially close to? Uh, they're all great guys, you know. I uh, played with Thomas Dittry uh, in two of the alternate shots, but I've known him for forever pretty much. But uh, some of the guys I didn't know, Adrian Maronk, uh, we played the best ball together, and he's a great guy. Antoine Rosner, um, just pretty much everybody. We had a great time that week. Exciting group of guys looking ahead to the Ryder Cup. Looking forward to it. And hopefully oh, yeah. you'll be there, Sep. Absolutely. Great to see you. Yeah, Thanks, Sep. See you. Great Cheers. To see you. Have a good week. All right, so we're going to have a little wander over here because in the background you might be able to see a little bit of an entourage going on over here. Jamie, isn't there? Who yeah, have we there got? Is. Yeah, we've got uh, Rory having a chat with uh, the boss, Keith Pelly, over there. But Rory's got his entourage around him. Big week for him to start the season as well, isn't it? Obviously, he'll have his eyes on the majors this year. John Rahm has made an electric start to this season. He's won four of his last six stars. Rory not teed it up yet in 2023. Yeah. He's going to look to make a statement this week. Yeah, well, he's going to have to because it's not going to take long now before Rahm gets to number one, knocks Rory off the perch. That's, I think that's going to happen in the next few weeks. But he you know, might have something to say, say about it, really. Loves this event, won it a couple of times. So what a great place to start your season here, right here on the Majors course in Dubai. Yeah, Michael Bannon's there. having a good old chat with Keith. I wonder what they're talking about. Yeah, he's got the coach. He's had the guys outfitting him with the new equipment making sure that's all good as well hasn't he first week of the season for him what conversations what stuff is he going to be going through on the range here uh, pretty i think when you come back first thing it's a distance control with your irons that you can sometimes lose in that off season he's probably keep himself pretty sharp he's probably played a few games back at home um, he's always a great driver of the ball that's a natural for him it's that distance control you know when you're over your irons you're in between clubs that's what you've got to get back and home and that's what i'll be working on Let's have a little one down as we make our way down. Big for the tournament as well to have Rory McIlroy here. You know, we know he moves the needle. How much of a difference does you see it making when you're out on the course, interacting with the fans, when you've got a genuine superstar like Rory McIlroy in the field? Yeah, well, he's the Pied Piper of the DP World Tour. You, you watch it. I'm on featured groups this week. Watch that this week before the main coverage comes on because Rory will be on it one of the days and there'll be thousands out there watching him, including me, yeah. and I can't wait to see that. I'm very excited to see the action. Right here, so we've got a couple of Ryder Cup vice captains for Team Europe, Eduardo Molinari and Nicholas Colsarts, having a little bit next to each other. We'll annoy them, they like to be annoyed. Nico, how you are you? Yeah, we're coming to annoy you, and Eduardo. Are we doing this together? Uh, we're going to get you yeah, in together, together, I think. Together. Eduardo, good to see you. How are you? Very good well, thanks. So, a couple of all the way. Are we? Ryder Cup vice captains. Nico, how much are you looking forward to taking on that role? Uh, it's super exciting. <laughs> I mean, um, I think if you speak to anyone that's been involved in one, I mean, you were in the backroom staff for a long time, I can <laughs> see your face lighting up. <laughs> yeah, it's a huge honor, uh, it's, you, you feel really proud, uh, but in the end, I mean, the mission is to, uh, to get this cup again, so we, uh, we have a lot on our plate. And Eduardo, last couple of weeks, Hero Cup, you were behind the scenes there. How helpful was that, looking ahead to picking the team, who's going to play together, things like that? I think it was very helpful for a number of things. Um, first of all, get all the guys together, uh, spend more time one with each other, uh, test a few pairings, of course. Uh, and then even for Nico and I, just uh, being around and understanding what the vice captain should be doing during the day, mm -hmm. the, you know, the daily routine, I think you know, a lot of things were really, really helpful and hopefully it will do us well in Rome. Team's shaping up nicely. I have to say, about a year ago, I was thinking, who's, who's going to make the team? Because it's going to have a different look to it. But I have to say now, after that Hero Cup, it's looking pretty strong, isn't it? There's a lot of competition for places. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as you say, we're, we're at a time where there's a bit of a changing of the guard. But there's a lot of uh, young and upcoming talents and uh, you know, Hero Cup displayed a few of them and I'm sure there will be a lot more players uh, winning this year and, and trying to make the team. There's someone else who's just starting to play some good golf, a guy called Francesco Molinari. Do you think he can make the team? I'll let, I'll let, I'll let, Nico, I'll let Nico have a say. That's a quick pass <laughs> over to Nico, that. A bit biased, a bit biased. <laughs> I, think, I think the thing that stands out for Frankie last week was the exercise of being a playing captain mm -hmm. and play at the same time. Well, the meaning of a playing captain, <laughs> but I think it would have been a, a difficult exercise for him coming into the week, and I think he was able to perform to a pretty high level with a certain level of uh, responsibilities, which is, which uh, which is great for him heading into Rome, wherever he plays, doesn't blah blah blah. You know he's going to be involved to a to a certain degree. What about playing vice captain? Your game in a good shape at the moment. Make a little charge for the team. <laughs> I think we're a long way from that. He's much closer than I. I need, we need a word also. Guido Migliozzi. Yep. Some talent, isn't he? I mean, he played great last week. Yeah. Must have high hopes for him. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
Guido is, uh, has been playing some really good golf in the last uh, four or five months. Um, the great thing about Guido, I think, is that when he's in contention, when he's uh, under pressure, he performs very, very well. And he showed that in the French Open when he won. He showed that at Hero Cup that you know any time there was a, a moment where you needed to make a putt or needed to hit a good shot, he was there. And that's something that is very important in the Ryder Cups. Brilliant stuff, guys. Thank you so much for your time. We'll let you crack on and hone the games with the new season to come. Great to see you. Very busy range here at Emirates Golf Club and lots of great names out there as well in the field this week. Jamie, who are you excited to see in action? Uh, all of them, really. Uh, Rory's playing with uh, Ryan Fox and Tommy Fleet with Tomorrow Morning Early Doors. That'll be some watch. And you've got Thomas Peters, Tyrrell Hatton, Shane Lowry, the list goes on and on and on. One thing is you've got to be a good ball striker around here. The rough is up, so you really want to hit the fairways. That, that seems obvious. Not obvious in every golf course, but certainly this week. Um, greens are small as well, so you need good iron control. So, Hence, you've got to be a good ball striker to win here on the Magilis course. A couple of names you haven't mentioned there. Victor Perez, Minwoo Lee, of course, yep. first and, and a good finish last week. What do you rate their chances coming in? Momentum, a really big thing. Perez could do anything. He could do anything. The way he played last week, confidence is up. He's fresh as well. So, yeah, he could have another big week, as could Minwoo Lee, because Minwoo Lee's a quality player. Guido Migliozzi, shot of the year, that, by the way, that French national on the 18th. Great talent as well. So, yeah, Adrian Moronk, lots of good young players as well. So, it could be anybody's kit, but I do have somebody in mind. I thought you might do it. Insi, you played in the Pro-Am yesterday, so you've got to see the conditions firsthand. How's the course shaping up? I mean, it's looking beautiful. Uh, I played here quite a few years ago in the Amiga Masters myself, and it was a ladies' event. The fairways were slightly, slightly wider, so the thing that stood out for me was actually how narrow the fairways were. I was quite surprised. I mean, the course is about 7,400 yards or so. Um, but overall, I'd say the fairways are good. Um, the rough is definitely quite long, and quite often I found myself, if you miss the fairways, that the long rough grows against you. And so if you've got like a mid iron in hand, it's going to make it quite difficult uh, to stop the ball on the greens. And they've actually dug them out and redone them about two years ago. And we all know with any new greens, generally speaking, it's always a bit firmer. Um, however, we are supposed to have rain this week, which is just bizarre. It blows my mind. Um, I found the fairways relatively soft yesterday. Uh, I could definitely see the pitch marks. So potentially, as the week goes on, we might have preferred lies, which might mean it's an opportunity to go low. However, if you do end up in the rough, where it mixes a bit of water and rain, it does make it a little bit more difficult to get that club through. So it could get a bit skiddy. Um, overall, I think it's going to be a great competition. Jamie, just quickly, what style of player does this layout suit? Uh, got to hit the tee, got to hit the fairways, got to hit the greens. That's what it's going to suit this week. Always has done, always will do, Kit, because the greens are so small, so you want to be on the short stuff. Well, the course has been here for a long time. 1989 was the first event held here. Jamie played in the one back in 1990. He's been here every year since. Let's take a look at the history of this wonderful place. Jamie and I have come out to these incredible hospitality suites that loop around the back of the 18th and the 9th green down behind us. Of course, the Hero Dubai Desert Classic, the oldest, the original Middle East golf tournament. It's been here since 1989. This man, Jamie Spence, played in 1990 and you've been at every one since then. How much has this place and this tournament changed over the years? Yeah, quite incredible. The golf course is pretty similar. They move some of the tees back, but look at the vista behind us with the marina and the landscape, it's, that has evolved. There was only three hotels over there when we first came and nothing from here to the airport. So Dubai itself has just evolved and changed dramatically. But this golf course is something else. It's the one that all the players want to win outside the majors on the DP World Tour. Rory's won it twice, Tiger's won it, Seve's won it, Ernie Els has won it. Everyone wants to win it. We've seen the greats come here, play and win. How important is it to have tournaments like that on the tour schedule, such rich history and tradition? It's great for the spectators as well because they get to know the golf course as well and they come here and play this brilliant layout from Carl Litton. Front nine's quite difficult, then the back nine gives you plenty of scoring opportunities with the three par fives, especially two in the last six. And this 18th is just a magnificent hole just over my left shoulder here. But plenty of drama there. Guys go for it in two, knock it in the water, make eagles. All sorts of things happen on 18. 
you say the course hasn't changed too much over the years. That skyline and the city definitely has, hasn't it? it Paint has. a picture of what it was like when you came here in 1990. Very little, actually. We, some, we stayed in the city and we used to drive out to the course, and there was not a single building, really, once you left the city. But now it's just the, the, the Emirates Mall is there. They've built the monorail. It's just quite incredible. And the marina over here now is absolutely spectacular. So the whole thing has changed. But the constant is this little oasis, this little Majlis course here, right where we're standing. So much history in this great tournament, including Rory McIlroy's first DP World Tour win back in 2009. It was tough coming down the stretch. Um, you know, I had a big lead, but I was trying not to throw it away, and because I'd lost a couple of tournaments before that in Switzerland and Hong Kong. He's played it very well. He's played it extremely well. That's a magnificent shot from McIlroy. Rory, the story in Dubai. It was a big one for me to win. It, it, it got me over that hurdle of finally winning on tour. It you know, gave me a lot of confidence to go on and know that I could win on the highest level. So, you know, it was a big moment in my career for sure. And we're about to be joined by a pair of YouTube sensations as Bubby and Garrett from Good Good are about to join us here in the studio. And it's great to have Bubby and Gary from you, Good sir. Good in thank the studio, you, guys. Thank Thanks you so much for, thank you for coming having us. in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell us what brings you to Dubai. The the Dubai Desert Classic. Dubai That's Desert what we're here Desert. for. Yeah, yes, sir. We're, we're going to be watching golf, filming content, doing our thing, as you saw. You know, yeah. YouTube golf. That's what we do, and. That's what we're here for. Yes, sir. But also a lot of other things, like we're going to be skydiving and some Ooh, other stuff. We'll what? see about that. We'll How see about that. Hey, you don't that face is looking we'll unsure. See. I know you're not doing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the fence. I'm on the fence. I might do it. We were on some oh. water slides this morning. They had some free falls on them. I enjoyed that. That's a little different <laughs> than 10,000 feet up. So. Yeah, that's a little bit closer to the ground, yeah, isn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I know you guys got out there in the Pro-Am yesterday and you played last year as well. Yes, What's sir. been your experience of the course and the tournament? I mean, the course is absolutely phenomenal. It might be one of the purest courses I've ever been on. The greens are absolutely perfect. Like, obviously, if you're a golfer, the greens are everything. You can tell a course is nice by the greens. Fairways, pristine. It's just absolutely beautiful. It's tough. Like, obviously, in the Pro-Am, we play the up tees. Mm -hmm. Some holes are 120 yards up from the Pro. Yeah. Makes a big difference. Of course, from the tips, wouldn't want to play it. It yeah. me up. <laughs> Bobby, but last year, you were the Pro-Am champions. And this year, you guys have both caddied. Sorry, and yourself, yeah, Garrett. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is the winning formula? Because you're back and you're winning again, probably upsetting a lot of people. Well, <laughs> Holding putts like that for a start, that helps. That, that'll do. That'll do. You want to? I mean, I'll talk. Last year we started out really bad. We were only six under on the first nine. Right. They shot 22 under on the back nine. The guys this year did the exact opposite. Yeah. They were 23 under on the front nine. Yeah, but then also Andrew Johnson, he played really well. So did Foxy last yeah, year. Yeah, and, and Foxy as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that was the difference. Like the pros in our groups, mm -hmm. both years have played very well. So. I think that helps. It's, it's also like sometimes we've done programs before and the pros are out there. It's more of a practice round for them. Mm -hmm. Foxy and Andrew Beef Johnston both got competitive. Yeah, like they, they wanted seriously. to win. So it's fun when you get a pro like that who's like takes it serious, wants to win the pro am. Yeah, you've got two good guys there. Who are the players, the pros that you've got to film with over the last few years that you've most oh, enjoyed the company of? Mm. I mean, every single pro we've filmed Every with single one, has yeah. been absolutely phenomenal. I got to ride in the cart for nine holes with Xander. He's an absolutely awesome guy. Yeah. John Rahm, awesome guy. Alex Norin. Ricky Fowler was fun, too. Can we just drop too. the mic there? Yeah. Just, just, you know, <laughs> every name's being dropped in there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and everything. And the, the coolest thing is, too, is we recently partnered with Callaway. So... 
that opens up the door a lot with opportunities to film with phenomenal pros, all of them under their staff. And yeah, every Callaway person we've been with, Annika to everyone, has been absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, they've been great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've got a few questions here from uh, the, the fans joining in, I guess. I mean, so many questions already. Uh, question from Mark. Uh, who was your boyho uh, boyhood golfing hero? Oh, ooh, Tiger Woods for me. <laughs> Tiger Woods, without a doubt. There's I feel no like that's everyone's. Is. I almost want to say anyone but Tiger Woods. Or maybe, anyone you know, in the modern day, in the modern Ricky game Fowler right now. Yeah, okay, what yeah, was he Ricky like? Because you made a video with him as well. Yeah, no, that was, that was surreal. It really was. Like, seeing someone that you've idolized in the game of golf and actually seeing them in person and, and getting the opportunity to play a match with him was, was insane. But, yeah, I would say him. I just thought I, I loved his, like, bright colors. He, mm. I feel like... Overall, too, he, he influenced the, the younger generation of golf in, in a massive way, as well as obviously Tiger Woods, but I'd say Ricky for me. That's a tough one for me. I've always just been like a Tiger Woods diehard <laughs> fan. Like, it does not matter who is playing. If Tiger Woods is playing, I'm rooting for him. Have you met him? I got his autograph in 2012 at the Ryder oh, Cup. Okay. Probably has no clue who I am, but I got his <laughs> autograph. I had my red high school golf hat shaking it out there. He grabbed it, signed it, went to the clubhouse. You were like Trust me, 14, he might know man. now. I was, I was 14. I was a sophomore in high school, so that was phenomenal. <laughs> and was I mean, crazy. we talked about uh, you know inspiring the next generation there with what Ricky Fowler's doing with his game and his presence. But you guys are obviously YouTube phenomenons, probably grown massively, uh, if not the leaders in growing in the last year Thank or two. You. You. Uh, but Thank for you. you, what is the dream? What is the ambition? in the YouTube world or whether it's as good good as a group or individually whatever it is what's the dream I, I think I think like our, our number one focus is always create the best content possible mm -hmm. but uh, when we kind of got into the YouTube game we wanted to figure out a way to make it different and almost like open up the the game of golf to mm -hmm. people who may have never considered playing golf mm -hmm. in the past so I mean, that's why we do the weird challenges that we do. Maybe it's a one club challenge or a random club challenge, or in the beginning, sometimes we would hit golf balls with a pan. So, <laughs> yeah. so people who might play baseball, soccer, tennis, they, they look at the game of golf and they're like, ooh, this looks fun. And also, hey, this match, looks pretty yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah. 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 Talk about this going on right here, because this looks like a lot of fun. So this was, this was, we were filming a Twigs versus Stumps. There's only a six hole match. This was a second hole. What is this, 14 at Shadow Glen? That was 14. 14 yeah. at Shadow Glen. And the thing is, at this point in time, we were doing Twigs versus Stumps. Twigs was up five to one on us. They've won five matches. <laughs> We've only won one. And somehow Matt came up, we needed this boost, and it propelled us to our second one ever is Team Stumps. This was the early days of it all, but well, this was... You, you gotta tell like the crazier part, is Micah gets up there first, hits the pin. No yeah, well that's my ball. No, I hit it, I, or hit, you, yeah. I hit it, one of the best shots of my life. I'm like, I'm gonna contribute, just put it to 20 feet. Micah hits the pin, puts it to six feet. And then Matt holds out. Matt it just kept it. getting better and better Crazy. and better. It I was... mean, we've just seen some of the best shots ever there. I mean, we've got another question here from Adam. Um, <laughs> Oh, I mean, what a reaction. That was unbelievable. I mean, brilliant shots over there. But uh, like I said, a question from Adam. Uh, do any of you believe that you can challenge the DP World Tour in their current form? And he's also mentioned that, Bubby, uh, you're on fire at the moment. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I mean, a blind squirrel finds an acorn every now and then. That's what I got to say. Uh, uh, would you challenge a DP World Tour? Yeah, so like, do you see yourselves teeing it up in one of these competitions? Oh, no shot. <laughs> no shot. No shot. They're on another level. It's, 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 it's echelons of difference, honestly. Like, now we are lucky enough to have Luke Kwan be a part of our group. He was a Corn Fairy Pro, won on a PGA Tour China. Yeah. And he's the best golfer, one of the best golfers I've ever seen in person, aside from Pro-Ams, obviously. And there's just levels to it. Like, if you're yeah. a scratch golfer, you're worlds away. John Rahm's a plus 12 right now in his last 16 rounds. Like 14, maybe. <laughs> he, would, he would give a scratch golfer 12 shots over 18 holes. That's there's, crazy. I got a better chance of throwing on a baseball uniform and pitching for the Chicago Cubs than I do <laughs> playing out here. There's no shot. Okay, I mean, we've just, got some more shots coming up of you here. I think we've got a little bit of back-to-back uh, -back hole out action. Uh, yeah, Talk us through this. Well, I'll go first and you want to go second? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was my shot. We had 83 yards over a tree playing with Kyle Berkshire and Micah. This was team underdogs versus overdogs. And I mean, I'm, I, did, I don't think too much when I'm on the course, brother. There's a tree in front of me. I had a lob wedge in my hand. I just opened it up and I swung as hard as I could, went in the hole. And then the next hole is Gary. Yeah, yeah, this was crazy. I think it was like 126 yards. And, and you hear Matt, he said, only one trying to play golf here. Everyone else missed the green. And I just like hit it. I'm like, there's just no way this just happened. I mean, back to back holes. You Unreal. I'm, it was I'm phenomenal. sensing like a theme there. Like every time you do something special, someone just comes along quite quickly <laughs> and slightly usurps it. See, see, see the way I look at it to me, to me, like with these whole outs and these crazy videos is I, I, 
there's that much skill involved when the ball goes in the hole from far away. It's honestly, to me, it's just it's simple mathematics. If you play enough golf and send a ball towards a hole enough times, every now and then, eventually, it'll go in. That's like, the true. odds are 12,000 to 1 to making a hole in one. We made one last night. Yeah, a whole hole in, like, three. A hole in, like, 159. Yeah. We did a hole in one challenge we and we made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you guys played night golf yet? Yeah. We have. And what's yeah. that like? Have you played Unreal. it before? No, that's my first time. Yeah, it's kind of been like a dream golf course for me to play because I see like people posting their swing videos on mm. Instagram and stuff. You see the city in the background, so it was awesome. It's phenomenal. I loved it. Beautiful. I what, loved it. What see other courses have line. you got to play in Dubai or if you've been a little further afield? Uh, so we played Jumeirah Golf State's the fire course already. Uh, we're playing the earth course. We're playing the, the creek course as well. And then obviously here and, and the night course as well. So. It's, it's been great. I feel like golf here is just perfection. Like <laughs> oh, every phenomenal. single course is, is so beautiful. It's phenomenal. The weather's phenomenal. Is it? Especially this one. I, th I think Emirates Golf Club is, is potentially a top three course for me, even maybe my favorite. Just like being out there in the Pro-Am, rough's perfect, fairway's perfect, greens are perfect. It's just unreal. You got the city in the background, which... Can't beat it. Can't beat it. We don't want to be in the rough too much. I mean, it's quite... Yeah. Do you find that? I mean, the pros are relatively strong. They're obviously very good as well in getting steep at the back of the mm -hmm. ball to get it out. But as amateurs yourself, first of all, just to give the viewers a little bit of insight to you guys, what do you have a handicap? What do you guys typically pay, play uh, off? And how did you find it out in the rough if you found yourself in there? I have never carried a handicap. I'm assuming I probably play to a seven. Okay. And a lot of people might not believe that because I can't hit the ball. No, far. I don't believe that. That's I'm not thing. playing you off seven. That's, <laughs> that's the only sure. thing. But it's like, I don't know. I played baseball growing up, so you put me in thick rough. It don't affect me too much. I just hack it out, just whack see it. What happens. Plus, I play. I, I decide the game's already hard enough. I'm not gonna make it any harder. I always ask when I get new clubs from Callaway. I get the player improvement irons, the big thick ones. Oh yeah. So I'm the chunky hard. monkey. The chunky monkeys, and I just <laughs> they go right through the rough, and mm. that thing flies. Yeah, I think, I think I'm around scratch, but again, like we didn't play in the Pro-Am yesterday, but watching them try and hack it out of it, it, it looked challenging. It's so much easier caddying, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Your perspective is almost simplified. Mate, just aim there, just hit, hit it like this, yeah. job done. It, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Brilliant stuff, guys. Thank you so much for popping in. It's been Thank a blast you, to have you and see some of those incredible us. shots. Enjoy so the rest of your Enjoy. time Thank here Thank in you guys. Have Dubai. A great day. Well, Jamie's been out onto the course here to check out the 18th hole and how best to play it with a couple of special guests. 18th hole at the Magellis, 564 yards. We've seen some drama over the years here with Seve and Ernie and Tiger and Rory and all the rest. Now, I know a man who can talk about this all better than I can. And that's this man here. He won the Ryder Cup, Jamie Donaldson. Jamie, how are you? Very well, you? Yeah, talk us through this hole, what do you do? How far left can you go there? Well, the longer hitters can go a long way around the corner, but the, obviously the more you push it, the more you go left. Where do you the go? More, well, I'll hit it, being one of the senior members <laughs> of the tour now. As you can see, the two buildings, you've got the really tall one today, there's not much wind, so you want it just left of that, finishing on the smaller domed building. That would be about perfect. So when you get on this tee, what are you thinking? Thinking birdie, eagle, hit, knock it on the green, just give it a rip? Yeah, you just want to hit it on that target. You've got to hit your target. If you're slightly left, you're in the rough now. Uh, if you're slightly right, you've got too far in and you're probably in the rough. So you've got to be bang on that dome. If you bang on the dome and the wind's like it is today, which is pretty benign, then you should be in the middle of the fairway going in with a sort of a three-wood, five-wood sort of uh, position. Many happy memories of this hole for you? Um, I do like it. It's I think this tee, with it being further this way, you know, presents the shot better. I hit it right to left, so I like to see it go off the big building onto the one Perfect. turning round the corner. Um, so yeah, for me it's better. For a fader, it's obviously it's not ideal, um, but I like the hole. I think it's probably as sporting as it can play. Sounds easy. Let's go and have a look at the second shot. Right, down here on 18. Turns a lot way, right to left, in the right hand rough here. Now we saw Richard Mansell tee off there. Now he's got a conundrum here. He's in the rough. But it's a real tease. Rich, what are you thinking here from this line? Uh, I'm hoping to just smash five iron as hard as I can and hit it in the grandstand behind. Hopefully catch a little jumper. And what are the difficulties for you being a long hitter on this 18th off the tee? Well, I've hit driver there. Obviously, I've pulled it a little bit left rough. But if I hit it on the line that I need to, it's probably bouncing in the water with the downslope there, which kind of makes me think that I probably need to hit three wood back here. But then it's obviously, you've got to hit the fairway to give yourself a wood at the green. So. Um, but listen, it's Tuesday afternoon, you're playing in the prime. It lies all right. What club have you got? I've got five on. Well, come on, let's knock it on. No. 
go, go, go. Oh, just didn't make it. I don't think he'd have a go at that in the tournament, this risk and reward 18th hole. I think he might have just chipped it out down the fairway. Hit wedge, wouldn't you? Wedge. In the tournament, wedge, wedge. There you go, but he was sporty enough to have a go here. Thanks, Rich. Great hole 18. We're going to see lots of drama here this week. Well, that is a serious risk and reward finishing hole. Didn't see you played the course yesterday, mm. didn't you? What's your strategy on that 18th? If I'm honest with you, Kit, I, I mean, last time I played the Amiga Masters here, I had to buddy the last to keep my card. And you can basically, because it's a dog leg right to left, it's 564 yards, which is relatively long in yardage, but you can also cut the corner. But then the issue is, if you cut the corner, the more you take on, the more you need to naturally carry. Easily reachable though in two, isn't it? Easily reachable in two. Yeah. However, if you pull it too far, you're in the palm trees and in the rough. If you push it, you've got the water that absolutely does come into place. So you need to be relatively accurate. And with your second shot, if you're out in the rough, you also need to hit over water and the pin normally Normally on a Sunday is cut uh, just beyond the water so normally you'd see players clubbing up trying to hit straight into the grandstands which leads them with a downhill putt so there's almost uh, a lot of variables and qualities that can come and bite you with every single shot you play on the 18th which is why it's a risk and rewarder. And you mentioned the water there. It is dangerous, isn't it, Incy? Because uh, we've got this little bit of footage of you playing. Oh, look. Who's that? Who's that so in the rough? You're over in the trees. Oh, yes. <laughs> Talk us through this. Talk us through it. The thing is, I wish I was mic'd up. Uh-oh. Oh. 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 Oh, thanks for that. <laughs> I mean, I wish I was mic'd up. It was a tour scramble and I had to go for it in two. And the ball was sat down in the rough. I had a hybrid in hand. And I was saying it out loud, this is not the play, this is not the play. If I was in a tournament... And I you've got a said, buggy. And you've got a buggy. <laughs> Can't even walk. Like I said earlier, I would 100% lay up. Um, I would have taken your advice. But thanks for throwing that one at me. You've taken one for the team there. That's very, very honourable. I do. Right. Let's look ahead to the serious business yes. of this Hero Dubai Desert Classic prediction time. I think I could hazard a guess at who you fancy to win yep. this week, Jamie, but come on, tell us who. World number one, Rory McIlroy. Should have won last year, to be honest with you. Had a go at it with his uh, second shot, did what Incy did, actually. But long way, a 257 with the mud on the ball. Could have easily got on the playoff, could have been his third win. I think he'd get it this year. His record round here is phenomenal, that's why I'm picking him. Only problem is it's his first game of the season, but. I don't think that's going to put him off, so Rory for me all day long. I know you quite fancy Rory as well, as everyone does, but you did say you've got a little bit of a backup pick. Yeah, I think my maybe surprising backup pick would be Guido uh, Migliozzi. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's, I think he's on form. He struggled a little bit at some point last year. He was part of the winning team in the Hero Cup. Um, he's based out in Dubai, so very comfortable as well. Um, but he also finished 20th last week. So I just feel towards the end of the season, he's found something in his game. I think he's thinking less as well. Every time I've spoken to him on the range, I ask him what he's working on and he kind of goes off this feel outcome. So he was kind of my initial pick, but I'm actually going to swerve to a slightly more obvious pick and go for Tyrrell Hatton. Okay. Only because, yeah, he's won Rolex Series events before. He loves- You're bigging up Guido. Yeah. Now you're going to Tyrrell. Sorry, Spencer. That's all right, no, it's <laughs> <you're, you're laughs> your choice. <laughs> I just saw it, you know. But Tira Hatton loves a big stage as well, and uh, he had a good week last week, and I just think he's loving it at the he moment. He would be my other pick as well. Yeah, I think Tira Hatton loves a, good one a Rolex pick. series event, yeah. doesn't he? Okay, let's talk about the score a little bit because it's a tough track, but they they generally do pretty well around here, don't they? Well, it's interesting when Rory won here, he won with 19 under and 22 under, whereas last year the winning score was 12 under. The wind picked up a bit, and we've got some bad weather. So this yeah. course, traditionally, you've got to shoot about the 20 under mark and make a load of birdies. But last year just prove that when the wind's up, and I think we're going to get a bit in the next few days, it's not so easy. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to predict. I'm just going to go middle diddle and go about 15, 16 under. Should do the trick, I'd say. Yeah, I like that. Incy, we had that amazing competition at the start of the day. What was the winning answer and how is the winner going to find out? Well, I was going to remind the viewers what the question was. How many tour titles has Hovland won before being a champion here last year? The option was zero, one, two or three. And the answer is... Drum roll, please. One. So if you got involved, thank you very much. Uh, the winner will be contacted at the end of the show. Um, and then you'll also receive the prize that we have lined up, which is exciting.
Brilliant stuff. Thank you very much. That's all we've got time for from the Zoom Virtual Clubhouse here at the Hero Dubai Desert Classic. Thank you so much for Jamie and Incy for being alongside me as ever. For all of the guys that have appeared, good, good golf for popping in. Ewan Ferguson as well. A great four days of golf ahead of us. Check out featured groups before the main coverage starts. See your local listings for all the times in your area. But let's look forward to a brilliant week, including world number one Rory McIlroy. Bye for now. It's where I lifted my first trophy. Rory, the story in Dubai, and it's just the first chapter of what will be a very interesting book. I went up against the best player in the world and I took him down and that's got to mean something. The FedEx Cup signed, sealed and delivered by Rory McIlroy. You know, I'm really proud of my year and excited for, for 2023. Rory reigns supreme, number one in Europe, number one in the world.